So I absolutely love doing these demo videos, especially with the Marshall stuff, but the question that I get asked the most is what settings do you use? And I want to kind of unpack my answer to that because the settings that I use on the amp are only one part of the equation. We need to talk about the guitar, the strings, the way you're playing, the pickups, the speaker you use, the microphone you use, the preamp that you use, and most importantly, what sort of tonal preferences you have and the context you want to use it in. So let's dive into it. So today we're going to talk about the JTM45. This is a reissue. I've recently had the bright cap change to, I believe, uh, like 47 picofarads or something like that. Or maybe it's microfarads. I can't remember. I'll have to ask my tech and double check because there's obviously a big difference there. Um, I'm playing this STR LJ1, which as you can see is a Les Paul copy. It's got Mojo Tone pickups, a maple cap, and an African mahogany neck and body. So it is a darker sounding guitar. The pickups are basically PAF style, uh, and they're a little bit brighter, which is cool. It kind of balances the guitar out, and I'm playing down a whole step with 11 to 50 strings. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but for me, anything thicker than a 46 for the low string generally sounds pretty good and pretty meaty. I wouldn't normally go any lower than that. For me, the three bass strings are the strings that make the biggest difference. If you're using a wound G, obviously that's going to make a big difference, but this is 2018, and who uses a wound G anymore? Um, so that's the guitar side of the equation. Then I'm running straight into the amp at the moment, and the amp is being fed into a speaker cabinet, which is the next room, which we'll have a look at. And I've got a Marshall 4x12 with four UK-made greenbacks. These sound pretty different to the newer Chinese made greenbacks and I don't think that's a case of you know the British doing things better than the Chinese or anything like that I think it's probably just got to do with the manufacturing process that's used and how that's done so this isn't like a racist thing you know Brits versus the Chinese or something this is probably just down to manufacturing and I'll admit I'm ignorant about the manufacturing process I just know that I prefer the sound of the greenbacks in this cab to the newer greenbacks that I tried in another cab. So, you know, make of it what you will. Furthermore, on there I've got an OPR modified SM57 which has a little bit more of an extended bass response. It almost sounds like a 57 blended with a ribbon microphone already. So that's a huge part of the equation. I've put that about four fingers, so what is that, maybe three or four inches away from the speaker pointed at the dust cap, so where the speaker cone meets the outer part of the speaker, it's pointed right there, I think that's a really good place to put the microphone. And from there I'm going into a uh, Universal Audio Apollo Twin and I'm using a preamp simulation of a Neve 1073, so this is adding some harmonics and some saturation, that's going into Pro Tools and then that's what you're hearing. I'm adding a little bit of stereo plate reverb to the signal. So that's the whole signal chain broken down and all of those steps are really, really important. Probably the speaker and the microphone are the biggest part in terms of shaping the overall end result. They're like the mastering EQ on your tone basically. And then the string gauge and the pickups and the way you've got the guitar set up controls the interaction with the front end of the amp and that's kind of going to control like the shape of the gain basically. So now that I've waffled on about that for a while, let's actually get in and talk about how we're going to dial this Marshall JTM45 in. Okay, the first thing to do, this is what I like to do with a JTM45, the two volume controls, we're just on the high treble channel at the moment on the high input. Basically, this high treble loudness, uh, it's not really loudness. You'll hear that when we set the amp, say, to two, which would be about nine o'clock, um, it's pretty clean, but it's still really loud. And then all that happens between about two and four is it gets a little bit louder. And from 4 to 10, it just gets more saturated. So really, to me, this amp kind of has like a preset loudness. And then the loudness control really just controls the amount of saturation and the amount of gain. To start off, when you're setting off um, an old Marshall like this anyway, don't just set the knobs to noon and tweak from there. Guitar players have this phobia about moving a control past noon. Um, and the reality is, is that these pots probably all have different tapers. And when you're manufacturing an amp, you know, you're going to use a particular spec pot that's going to have variation in there. You know, they often tell you the value, but they don't give you any other values like, hey, what's the, you know, standard deviation of the batch of pots or something like that. So every single amp is going to have a slightly different taper to all of the pots, and you have to kind of get used to your amp. But 
when I'm setting up a non-master volume Marshall anyway, I like to set it like this. I'll start with the presence at about four. Uh, the bass I'll just turn off, which is probably the one that's the hardest to get used to because everybody wants to set the bass to five because they think that means that's like neutral. On these amps, that is not neutral. These amps basically just add bass. So start with the bass off, especially when you're close micing an amp because you're gonna get that proximity effect which kind of blows the bass out. Set the middle to 10. Do it. And then set the treble control. I like it around noon, but I'm gonna start with it at about four. And I'll set the loudness on the high treble channel to about four. Uh, with the bridge pickup on my guitar, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the tone control to seven and the volume control to seven. That's another really important part of the equation as well. And this is what it sounds like. probably started off a little bit cleaner than you would expect a Marshall, almost sounds like a Fender, uh, and as I bumped the volume control up a little bit, I started to get a little bit of break up. So having the volume control around there means that if I want to take the high treble to about six, I'm going to have a bit of break up happening. From there, let's do a little bit of EQing. The presence control on a Marshall interacts with the gain. So as I turn the presence up, I'm going to get a little bit more drive. So with the presence on 10, it's a little bit chirpy sounding. I might back the presence off to about 6 or 7. That's kind of working for what I'm doing there. And um, let's play around with the bass and the treble and kind of balance those out. The bass is still on zero at the moment. That's not too bad. It could do with just like a little bit of reinforcement in the low end. That's not too bad. That's with the bass like on about one. Um, it does make it a little bit flubbier, so I'll turn the treble up a little bit. Let's take the treble to about six. Now that's cool for sort of like an edge of breakup kind of tone. I've still got headroom on my volume control though, so when I crank that all the way up, this is really gonna start to get nice and crunchy. That's what I'm talking about. That is the Marshall JDM45 really roaring. I will just bump the loudness up to about two o'clock there, and there should be plenty of saturation. sounded really really beautiful what you can do if you want to go for sort of like the Clapton blues breakers cream kind of thing is basically use your uh, tone control and roll it right off and you get this kind of thing happening so with it all the way up <laughs>
classic Marshall tone right there. What I'll do now is I'll bridge the two channels and we can use the normal channel rather than the bass control to sort of bring in a little bit more oomph if we want it. I just need to find a cable. Where's my cable? Here we go. So we're going to plug the low input of channel one into the high input of channel two. Let's go ahead and do that. And we'll have a listen to what it does to the kind of tone. There we go. So this is with the normal loudness off. For playing sort of rock rhythm guitar stuff, it's a little bit too flubby, so what I would do is basically take the treble all the way up to 10, turn the bass off, add a bit more presence, and roll the loudness on the normal channel down to about 4, and basically just take the high treble all the way to 10. And this is 60s and 70s rock and roll. <laughs> That's pretty exhilarating to play. Let's try it now with the Strat, because this is going to be total deep purple territory. for my terrible Richie Blackmore impression there. Uh, with the Strat, obviously, because it's sort of less mid-range and the highs are peakier coming out of the guitar, you back the treble off and turn the normal loudness up. That's kind of going to smooth everything out and get a little bit more balanced sounding. What we can do, especially with the Strat that's really cool, is use like a boost pedal uh, on channel one, turn the treble down. I'm going to use a Boss Super Overdrive because it sounds great. Let's try it. <laughs>
you can hear to finish off there, what I've done is I've cranked up the level and the tone on the Super Overdrive. I put the middle and treble to 10. I've added a little bit of bass in because this thing is going to be filtering out bass. Basically doing that kind of thing that modern amplifiers do where you roll off the bass in the preamp and you boost it in the power amp section. So that's how you can use your like Super Overdrive or Tube Screamer or whatever it is you're using together with one of these Marshalls to slightly get more of that sort of like thick modern thing, especially if you're using a dual humbucker guitar. So I think that kind of wraps it up. Given the microphone and the speaker and the preamp and everything else is the same, that's how I go about dialing in a Marshall JTM 45. If you guys like this video, please let me know, hit subscribe, and uh, if there's enough demand, I'll do this for a few other Marshall amps like, you know, the DSL, the Vintage Modern, uh, and non-Marshall amps like, say, the Soldano sitting here, or my Mesa Rectifier, or basically anything I can get my hands on, I'm happy to do a video like this and uh, kind of talk about how you can go about dialing in amps and get past that everything at noon guitar player mindset. See you around.